Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to start a brand new chapter on Cloudera Manager. So far, when we did any installation or configuration, we did them manually. That is, step by step, and sure, it felt like a lot of steps. For example, when we converted our cluster to high availability cluster, it took time and it took several steps. Looking at all those steps, you probably were thinking to yourself, do I have to remember all those steps? What if, if I forget a small little detail? Don't worry, you're not alone. We all have the same doubts and we have all been there. Managing a cluster manually, node by node, especially in an environment like Hadoop, where you could potentially have thousands of nodes, is not entirely feasible. That is where administration tools come into play. Tools like Cloudera Manager make management and maintenance of Hadoop cluster painless. In the next series of lessons, you will see how easy it is to install Hadoop on a set of nodes, how easy it is to add and remove nodes to and from the cluster, how easy it is to add services like HCFS, YARN, Flume, etc. You will see that all the tasks that we did manually can be done using Cloudera Manager with relative ease. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, then why on earth did we went through so many lectures looking at manual installation, manual configuration, etc.? That is a fair and valid question. Tools like Cloudera Manager hide all the details and mask all the complexities of installation and configuration from the end user, which on the surface looks like a very good thing. But administrators who manage Hadoop cluster only through tools like Cloudera Manager lacks the understanding of what happens behind the scenes. For example, they don't know what configuration properties are involved in configuring Kerberos. What are the key tab files and what should be the permission of key tab files? Which files go where? They don't know any details about what's going on under the hood. And that is a big problem. When all things are going well, none of the under the hood details are necessary. But administrative job becomes stressful and highly visible only when there are issues and without the under the hood details, he or she cannot effectively troubleshoot issues and solve real world problems. At Hadoop in real world, we understand this and that is why we focus on the hard details first and save the easy one for last. When we interview people for Hadoop administrator positions in our jobs, just in the first five to 10 minutes, by asking a couple of questions, we will easily find out whether a person knows what is going on behind the scenes. And if the person does not understand and know how to manually configure or install things, there is no way we will offer him a job. It breaks our heart when we see other Hadoop training places and Hadoop courses out there that cover only tools like Cloudera Manager without going into details those students are going to have a tough time when they manage Hadoop clusters in the real world. But you don't have to worry a bit because your foundation is very strong. All right, enough talking, let's get down to business. In this lesson, we're going to look at the components of Cloudera Manager and the benefits of using Cloudera Manager. Sounds good, let's get started. Before we look at Cloudera Manager's architecture, let's see what is Cloudera Manager capable of. Cloudera Manager is an end-to-end -end solution, starting from installation to monitoring and maintenance. Cloudera Manager supports click-by-click -click automated deployment and lets you stand up an enterprise-wide Hadoop cluster with ease. Next, Cloudera Manager helps administrator with end-to-end -end monitoring of the cluster. You can see the health of your services, health of individual nodes, information related to CPU, memory, etc. It also lets you configure alerts for critical events so you can proactively identify and troubleshoot issues. Next, Cloudera Manager allows administrators to manage Hadoop clusters with ease. You want to add a service, add or remove nodes to the cluster, or put a node or service in maintenance mode, all those tasks can be done with few clicks. So in summary, Cloudera Manager is an end-to-end -end solution to install, monitor, and maintain a Hadoop cluster. Cloudera Manager, as the name suggests, is a product from Cloudera and it is licensed with Cloudera's enterprise license. And it lets you manage Cloudera's distribution of Hadoop. If you're using another Hadoop distribution, for example, Hortonworks, then you would use Apache Ambari to manage the cluster and not Cloudera Manager. Now to the architecture. Cloudera Manager is architectured in an agent server model. 
Cloud Data Manager runs a central server which hosts the application and the entire logic to manage Cloud Data Hadoop clusters. Everything related to installing CDH, configuring services, starting and stopping services is managed by Cloud Data Manager server. The Cloud Data Manager agents are installed on every managed node. They are responsible for starting and stopping Linux process, unpacking configurations, triggering various installation paths, and monitoring that node. Agents are responsible for sending heartbeats about the services running on the node and the health of the node to the Cloud Data Manager server. With the information provided by all the agents in the cluster, Cloud Data Manager provides a consolidated view of all the services and nodes in the cluster. Next feature of Cloud Data Manager is the one that administrators love. Cloud Data Manager offers you two ways to install Hadoop and other components. One is through packages and the other way is through parcels. Packages are traditional way of installing Hadoop and any other Hadoop components. So far in our course, anytime we install the component in our cluster, like name node or resource manager, we use package in our installation process. Let's refresh our memory a bit. Let's say we would like to install resource manager. We would say sudo apt get install Hadoop yarn resource manager. This command will download the resource manager component from Cloud Rest website and begin installation. What version of resource manager will it download? Very simple. It will look up the file cloudera.list under etc apt sources list.d directory. Here in our cluster, we have specified the Cloudera version to be 5.1.2. So in our case here, resource manager version 5.1.2 will be downloaded and installation will continue. Now let's say we just install resource manager version CDH 5.1.2 in our cluster. Later, let's say one of the administrators in your team went in and updated the cloudera.list file to 5.7. Now the same administrator is trying to install node manager. So when he issues a sudo apt get install Hadoop yarn node manager, the command will download and install node manager CDH version 5.7. Now you have components in your cluster with different versions. Your resource manager is running on version 5.1.2 and your node manager is running on 5.7, which is totally different. Even though it is highly unlikely an administrator going in and updating the version like that, but there is no one to validate the version conflicts during installation, and this will lead to a lot of issues. Now let's talk about parcels. Instead of having separate packages for each component in your Hadoop cluster, parcels have a single object for installation, self-containing all the components you would like to install. So the question is, what advantage does this provide? The very first advantage is version consistency between components. Since all the components are self-contained in a parcel, the version between components are validated for consistency and matched, eliminating version conflicts. And the next benefit is an interesting one. Traditionally, when you upgrade components to new version with packages, you would have to shut down the old process which is running. Then you will download package for the newer version of the component then upgrade the component, then start the component once the upgrade is complete. There are two problems with this approach. First, there is a significant downtime while you upgrade, and second, once the upgrade is complete, and when you start the process, what if you experienced an error? You will spend a lot of time troubleshooting while the component is down. This increases the downtime of your Hadoop cluster, which is not ideal, correct? With parcels, you can stage the newer version of the component, meaning you can distribute a newer version of Hadoop components and leave it on the side without activating it while the Hadoop cluster still runs on the older version. When a new version is staged side by side, you can simply switch to a newer version by changing which version of CDH is used when restarting each process. You can then perform upgrades with rolling restarts in which each component like name node, data node, resource manager, node manager, etc., are restarted in the correct order to switch to the newer version with minimal service interruption. You can perform stage installation with minor version upgrades. That is, if you're upgrading from CDH version 5.1.2 to 5.1.3. Major version upgrades, for example, CDH version 4 to CDH version 5 require a full 
service restarts and downtime because of substantial changes between the major versions. Next. With packages, Cloud Data Manager only helps with the initial installation and subsequent version upgrades are left to you, and you need to perform it manually. Whereas with parcels, Cloud Data Manager manages all the steps in the CDH version upgrade. With parcels, distribution and activation of the software are decoupled. As mentioned before with packages, when you upgrade, you stop the current component you're upgrading, run the installation to upgrade the component, and start the component which is upgraded. The operation is synchronous and happens one after the other. With parcels, all steps are decoupled. Now that's a good segue to talk about the life cycle of the parcels. Now let's say you're upgrading from version 5.1.2 to 5.1.3. You'll first download the new parcel version to Cloud Data Manager server. And you would need internet connection for this, of course. Once downloaded, the second step is to distribute the parcels to all the other nodes in the cluster. Distribution simply unpacks the parcel on all nodes and it will not affect any of the existing components and all current components will still continue to run on the older version. To distribute the new parcel to individual nodes, you do not need internet connection because Cloud Data Manager server and nodes are on your same internal network. You can have multiple parcels distributed on your cluster side by side at the same time. Remember, distribution does not mean that the new version is activated. Once distributed, you can activate the newer version at any time. You can technically wait months before activating the newer version once the newer version is distributed. Again, you can have different parcels for the same component at the same time running side by side but you can decide which one to activate. Once a new parcel is activated, links to the parcels are created, and an administrator would restart the component or services that are upgraded. After the restart, the new parcel will be in use. To remove a parcel from the cluster, you would have to deactivate it first, and then you will remove the parcels from all the nodes in your cluster. Finally, you can choose to delete it. If you delete, it will delete the parcel from the Cloud Data Manager server. This is the complete life cycle of parcels. That is it, guys. In this lesson, we talked about what is Cloud Data Manager, the benefits of using a tool like Cloud Data Manager. We also looked at the architecture of Cloud Data Manager. And finally, we saw the benefits of using parcels versus using packages and the life cycle of parcels. In the next lesson, we'll stand up a Hadoop cluster using Cloud Data Manager and you will see how easy and fast it is. With that, let's wrap this lesson. See you in the next lesson.